<laughs> this great yeah. chief advocate and 14 year industry vets worked in regulated markets across the U.S. from CO, CA, FL, MA, and most recently, NJ. He's also an award winning solvent extraction pioneer and a product innovator who specializes in licensing, facility design, and build out. Coming to the stage next is a fellow dope dad and my man himself, representing Santa Barbara. Come on, Rosani, what you got for us today, my man? Hello, hello, hello. Uh, from Marijuana Moment, again, our buddy Kyle Yeager, again, with some uh, interesting news, some, some industries up in arms over cannabis. So most recently here, Lawmakers must step up and address federal state marijuana conflict, trucking executive tells Congress amid labor shortage. The state and federal marijuana policy conflict is creating a litigious environment, in quotations, from, for the trucking industry and contributing to the challenges of major labor shortage. The, uh, the head of the American Trucking Association, ATA, told Congress on Wednesday. During a hearing before the House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee, Rep. Michael Bost, a, a Republican from Illinois, asked ATA President Chris Speer about how much of the state-level legalization movement is impacting the trucking sector, particularly as it concerns drug testing requirements for their drivers. Speer said that it was an issue that keeps me at, up at night, in quotations, emphasizing his concern about impaired driving and the legal liability for the industry if a person gets into an accident under the influence. We're regulated by the federal government. We cannot have anyone impaired using marijuana or any other narcotic op operating this equipment, he said. So this channel conflict between the federal rules and states allowing this ambiguity is creating a litigious environment and we're caught right in the middle of it. Somebody, somebody's got to step up to the plate and put safety first. Want to smoke weed at home? Question mark. Smoke weed at home. If it's legal, fine, he said. Do not get behind the wheel of an 80,000-pound vehicle. We need to have strong standards, and we need to enforce the law. At the same time, he said there, the issue is tough, quotation, in quotation, because there's a 78,000-worker deficit in the trucking sector, and he wants to incentivize people to apply. This is an issue that I pose to you all. We've got to work on. Spear didn't explicitly acknowledge the challenges resulting from federal drug screening requirements for truckers, but that appears to be a major contributing factor to the labor shortage. Not people wanting to drive while impaired, but failing drug tests that can, that can tech, detect THC metabolites for weeks or months after a person consumes. Tens of thousands of commercial truckers are testing positive for marijuana as part of the federally mandated screenings. Recent data from the Department of Transportation, uh, the DOT shows. In 2022 alone, 40,916 truckers tested positive for inactive THC metabolites. The number increased by 32% compared to 2021 in just a year. And, and a large fraction of the truckers who tested positive haven't returned to the sector. Last year, DOT reiterated that the workforce it regulates is prohibited from using marijuana and will continue to be tested for THC, regardless of state cannabis policy. However, the department issued a notice in 2020 stating that it would not be testing drivers for CBD or D8 for that matter, or HHC. Rep. Earl Blumenauer from Oregon <clears throat> sent a letter to the head of the DOT last year emphasizing that the agency's policies on drug testing truckers and other commercial drivers for marijuana are unnecessarily costing people their jobs and contributing to the supply chain issues. The department did Possess, uh, did propose a new drug testing policy last year that could have significant implications for workers who use marijuana off the job. Current DOT policy mandates urine testing, but it recommended that testing of oral saliva be added to the alternate options. Depending on frequency of use, THC is generally detectable in saliva anywhere from one to 24 hours after use, in contrast to two weeks or more months of urine-based tests. A top Wells Fargo analyst said last year that there's one main reason for rising co costs of, and worker shortages in the transportation sector, federal marijuana criminalization and resulting drug testing mandates that persist even as more states enact legalization. Last year, a, co a coalition of more than two dozen congressional Democrats filed, filed a bill on promoting workplace investment to combat climate change, and they want to boost the workforce nationwide by protecting people in legal marijuana states from being penalized due to federal drug testing policies. 
Meanwhile, a senator sent a letter to the DOT last year seeking an update on the status of the federal report and to research barriers that are inhibiting the development of the standardized test for marijuana impairment on the roads. The department the department is required to complete the report by November 2023 under a large scale infrastructure bill that President Joe Biden signed. Experts and advocates have emphasized that evidence isn't clear on the relationship between THC concentrations in the blood and impairment. A study published in 2019, for example, concluded that those who drive at the legal THC limit, which is typically between two to five nanograms of THC per milliliter of blood, were not statistically more likely to be involved in an accident compared to people who haven't used marijuana. Very interesting point. Separately, the Congressional Research Service, <clears throat> excuse me, separately, the Congressional Research Service in 2019 determined that while marijuana consumption can affect a person's response times and motor performance, studies of the impact of marijuana consumption on drivers' risk of being involved in a crash have produced conflicting results, with some studies finding little or no increased risk of crash after marijuana usage. Another study from last year found, by that, found that smoking CBD-rich marijuana had no significant impact on driving ability, despite the fact that all, studies, all study participants exceeded the per se limit for THC in the blood. That's Saman Razani reporting for High Nine News.